Monday nights feature the time for us to delve into what's trending in the world of sport, especially in Ghana, particularly at the African Games. I'm Gary L. Smith and I'm sitting in for Fento Tahiru Fento. Welcome to Sports Zone, powered by the Joy Sports team. And I'm looking at my device because I'm looking for the latest adjectives that have been ascribed to the Joy Sports team. They say we are troublesome. They say we like negative news. They say we don't like Ghana. They say whenever there's positive news, we do it small. But when there's negative news, we blow it up. I'm not sure if that is true. What is true is that we come in the service of our country. We come in the service of you. And today, we have small trouble. We have small negative news as well. Because we broke the story about... Uh, how many hours ago now? Uh, six hours ago, yeah. That South Africa had withdrawn from the African Games. They said they won't play again. They didn't just withdraw their men's team. They removed their women's team too. And they said, because Ghana is not organized and has not been organized in terms of preparations, they couldn't really partake in the Games because the pitch was not great. The pitch at the Accra hockey um, field, the, the, the field, sorry, at the Accra hockey pitch is not up to scratch. And so they could not risk their team who are going to be playing in the Olympic Games. We'll delve into that. Hear your comments as well. Plus, the athletics was today. We've been waiting for it for weeks and it did not disappoint. The Ligon Stadium was filled to capacity. That's the positive news we have for you. Ghanaians went and trooped and saw... Mary Boachi make her way to the final tomorrow for the 100 meters. And also, two Ghanaian men heading into the final of the 100 meters. Benjamin Azamati and also, um, what's I guess first name? Barabas, I guess. The, the biblical one. I'm Gary Al Smith, and I said I'm with my gentleman here, Victor Achutamaklo. Now, he's in big trouble because they say he's the, the, the chief trouble causer of the week. Every week, we have a new trouble causer at Joy Sports. This week, is him. We'll tell you about it. And Danny Granting, this man, if they get in those, skin him alive. Thankfully, we have money. Thanks to Syntex, who are our sponsors of Sports Zone, and also Hunters, introducing Hunters Real Apple Cider, and our new sponsor, even though we are troublemakers, we, get, we keep getting reputable sponsors. Johnny Walker. Let's give a big welcome to Johnny Walker. <laughs> Johnny has walked. Johnny has, has walked. walked to joy. Yeah, yes. Johnny has walked to joy. Johnny Walker. <laughs> Aquaba. Let's go for this break. When we come back, we begin the chat. And the numbers are there. How to contact us are there. Let's start hearing your comments here on SportsZoom from now till 10.30. What a week. Last week, I mean, I watched the show last week and it was pretty hot. Today is packed because the Africa Games is here. It's been an amazing festival of sport. And for my money, we should be hosting games like this every year. You know, it gingers the population in a way that few things can. And it's been amazing watching the various disciplines light up our television screens and also our social media feeds. And as we witness the prowess of African sportsmen and women, it's been a delight to host them as well. Obviously, it's not come without some controversy. As you know, journalists have done their best, our best, to report both the good and the bad. So that's where we start from, the Africa Games. Um, Victor and Danny have been two of the most embedded reporters across the various venues, uh, nine venues in all, ten if you take, give or take, depending on how you yeah. count the venues. Mm -hmm. How many venues have you been to so far? Um, three. Three venues. Botiman. I've been to Botiman. I've been to the Accra Stadium. I've been to uh, Ligon. Ligon. I'd say four. The Conference Center Dome, Accra Sports Stadium, um, the Laboma Beach, and then now at Bukop. You've not gone to Botiman? No, I haven't been They're to Botiman. <laughs> so so, so we went to Botiman before the games. No, no, during, after the, during the games. No. Very interesting. Yeah. That should give you an idea of how we spread the duty. Yeah. Because um, Fent has not, I know Fent has not been to the beach yet. 
Fence has not been to the beach yet. He's not been to any of the um, Alisa. No. Alisa Hotel is where they did the, the Scrabble. Scrabble. And then the chess, the chess as well. As well. Yeah. Hillview Hotel, they did the chess at the Hillview mm -hmm. Hotel as well. And then, so that, that's where the Joy Sports team uh, me, I've been at the back doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Causing trouble that you haven't betrayed my team. Me, that they say I've been causing the trouble. Can you believe I've not been to any of the venues? I've not been to any of the venues. So it's from tomorrow that I'll start going. So I've been putting all the information together. And, you know, like, just the Joy Sports team. I've been putting all the information together. And, you know, like, just two pass. Uh -huh. I'm a, I'm a pass. I'm a match day. I'm a match day. Simple. 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 Uh -huh. So, but generally, though, yeah. let's start with the good news. How have you appreciated the fact that the African games are in Ghana? Um, look, as, as a reporter, these are some of the things that you look forward to. Um, especially when you don't get the opportunity to go out. When the athletes come home, you have to take advantage of it. And that's why it's good that you spread your wings. You go to as many venues as you can, even when you are not assigned. Like today, when, <laughs> when I went to Ligon, I will not wait for somebody to say, to assign me. Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll have to be there because you have to see the action. And it's, a, it's an experience. Um, you meet new people, um, you get more experience. You see, the more you talk to people who've been exposed, the athletes, the officials, it also broadens your horizon, it broadens your knowledge in, in, in the various sports. And um, even as sports journalists, it is these games that we've used to expand our knowledge in certain sports. Uh, a paddle ball and, and, and cool. Pickle ball. Pickle ball. Pickle pickle ball, ball. And, and, and cool. Pickle ball. Yes. <laughs> so you, you'll be forced to learn some of these things. And it's, it's, it's very important. And also, um, from, a, from a host nation participation point of view, um, yes, of course, it started a bit slow for Team Ghana. Um, you'll be sitting there hoping that things get better, and then this weekend happens. Oh, I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm the savior of the land. No. <laughs> I'm wrestling. Hey, see, thank you. See, I'm wrestling. Just, thank you. Now, me, hey. me, I'm going to do offering. Yeah. I'm going to give him offering. Hey, this me. is my, my title. Let, give him let, let me tell you a quick story. So, Friday, I was at Legon. I was having a, just a nice chat with some of the Federation presidents. And they said, look, if anybody is going to save the day, it's going to be arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. And look, he was calling them, the arm wrestling president, calling them, they said, whatever you need, you tell us. Because they could sense that he was the one going to save the day. And true, 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 true. You do show. Hey. You know, it was, it was phenomenal watching yeah. them win, win, win. And for, yeah. for those who are asking how, how could they win 41 medals, well, it's a bit like the, the boxing where they have the, the various weight With, classifications, yeah, yeah. right? So, and then, not just that, they do all those weight classifications in left and, and right. right. So you do the whatever weight, 48, yeah. whatever weight, left, then you do the right as well. Mm -hmm. And apparently, the left, we shoot them, the right, we shoot them. So if you add all the weight classes, that is how Ghana won. Not 40, initially we had 40, but they clarified that yeah. it was actually 41. And to give you the depth of how, how important it's been to Ghana's trophy <laughs> hall, Ghana had only five yeah. before then. Yeah. That's, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah. And, and the 41 blows every other medal hall from every, any other African games out of the water. So we thank them. Our previous was 10, 29. 29. 29. That was the highest. At all, the whole game, yes, and I'm wrestling, and I'm and wrestling will give us 41. 41. Hey. I mean, it goes to show, you know, and I'm sure viewers would say the WhatsApp numbers are there 0240 at 910330 that we should focus our strengths on what we are good at, you know. And if it's arm wrestling, it's gonna be then it's gonna be yeah. the arm wrestling. In the meantime, it's instructive to know that this is the first time arm wrestling is being scored, and we are hoping that the usual Ghanaian disease of being pioneers and being good, and then other nations catching up and overtaking us doesn't doesn't us doesn't doesn't play out play, yeah. uh, play out on, on on arm wrestling as well. So a lot of things have happened in the football. We've been doing well. The men's football, the women's football. Yeah. Those were some of the um, places of uh, bright spots. The boxing also was good yeah. because more than half of our boxers had a bye, which means their their opposition did not come from the games come for the games and so even before they what struck a blow yeah. most of them were already bronze medalists all right and so most of them started from bronze medal winning positions and that's how we know that boxing will also give us certain medals as well yeah. but it's crystallized into a lot of things um egypt has been 
Look, Charlie, mommy, where? Even in arm wrestling, eh? <laughs> even in arm wrestling, where we got the biggest hole. There's someone, I was going through your Facebook post today, yeah. and there was someone who says that we have been so fixated with football that when he saw your post about gold difference, he misconstrued that for gold, gold difference. Gold difference, yes. yes. So, and, and that was because Egypt, as good as we were in arm wrestling, were still second <laughs> in arm wrestling. <laughs> arm wrestling, which is our forte, they were still second. Yeah. And, as and, and actually fight, won more gold. They won more gold yeah, than, than we did. did. Yeah. That's crazy. Than we did. And so they were first on the table. And this is a good time for me to say that when you are counting gold medals at the African Games or at multi-sport events, the weighted averages favor gold uh, or the team that win gold. And so if I should win two gold and achieve two gold, nine silver, 16 bronze, and Achu should win one gold, nine silver, 16 bronze, and Dani should win three gold, zero silver, zero, silver, zero, silver, zero, zero bronze, I'll be on he'll three. still be number one. Yeah. So the weighted average, and um, so if I should now win for different games, but for the African games, if I should win 50 silver, yeah. that will equal one gold. Yeah. So that's, that's the way the hook is <laughs> you, you won't catch you up. You won't catch up. But Gary, I think the biggest story, the biggest win for Ghana has to be the cultural plurality. Yeah. And getting to see what pertains elsewhere and how we can adopt how those... We yes, how we should <laughs> adopt. Thank you for that word. Because we often live with a lot of assumptions about what happens elsewhere and how one sport dominates and all of that. We've had a rude awakening, yeah. right? about how some of the things, and some of the things that the other countries are doing are not rocket science. Some of the countries that are excelling, that are beating us to some of the, in some of the disciplines, don't have a bottomless pit of cash just fueling, like fueling what they do. They are just intentional and very measured in where those resources are going to come from to fund what they do. And I think also very creative in terms of the infrastructure in place that will form the bedrock of what you're going to do. So for example, we spoke at length to the table tennis, the tennis, the Egyptians and the South Africans and how come they have 14 year old beating heavyweights on the continent because by age 14, that kid would have played for eight, six years of competitive, right? Experience, would have had eight years of competitive experience under their belt. That is because there is an infrastructure that either requires by law or by convention that in Egypt, almost every club there is a sports club. Sporting club. Sporting club. Yeah. Not only in principle, not only by name, but in right. deed. Yeah. Right? So when they tell us the story about Dina Meshref, Godahana, they can tell you where they have come from, that she played for Ali. And by playing for Ali, there's credibility to the talent, and that's how she will get into the national pool. If Dina Meshref got to three she or was four... She's 16. Meshref is 27, 27 now. Yeah. Okay. Who was the God teenager? Godahana was 16. 16, yeah. She's now Africa's number one. Are you kidding me? Yes. But at 14, she was whipping the heavyweights on the continent. She won the table tennis championship, so everyone knew this is the trajectory. But the space is so competitive such that... If you go to one, two tournaments and you do not excel, there is a pool of talents from in the national pool that is coming to replace you because they also play at the similar level, clubs over there. And that is not a million dollar economy, no. no. It is just commitment to at the basic level because getting that fundamentals right is important. So at the basic level, they invest into who teaches these kids so that the 14-year-old kid from Egypt has world-class tennis talent. Yeah, so on your screen is the updated table. Egypt, nobody's going to catch them. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. They and Nigeria together are the most successful nations in African uh, games history, but they have really shown Nigeria their true size in these games. Usually, at the end of every game, it's almost, you know, touching the neck stance and neck. between... Yeah, or neck and neck. South Africa have had a good showing as well. Uh, with 93, they also didn't come to play. Algeria have been phenomenal yeah. quietly. Yeah. You know, they've been phenomenal. And the North African teams, all of them have that culture that actually is talking about 
of sporting but th clubs. This is a continuation of what we saw in Rabat. Yeah. So if you take boxing, for example, in Morocco five years ago, the team that came third was Algeria yeah. in a lot of the medals that yeah. they won. So when you see them five years on, now being able to spread their tentacles and being competitive in those areas, it, it shouldn't really surprise you. Right, so um, that's been a medal table. Please let us know what you've thought of the African Games in general so far. Um, how have you experienced it where you are, anywhere in Ghana? You know, has it been through television? Have you wanted to go for the Games yourself? Did you find the fact that, you know, they were charging at first prohibitive and now that the administrators and organizers have made it all free, have you gone? I hear this weekend in particular, a lot of families went to yeah, yeah, yeah. Botiman and Botiman things like that, right? It was the same last week. Yeah. Also. Wow, that's great. That's great. And it, that, this is what we want to see. Yeah. Like, I had calls from MDs and things this weekend. Yeah. Charlie, today what they have, I won't go, one of them, I can't name, he said, Charlie, I won't go throw the kiddies for there. <laughs> Make me and the boys go drink small. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but that's you the know, essence of that's, it. Yeah. I think the past that, and there's still time for us to get that right, is to tell the experience side of it, right? so that you are directly investing into the next generation of sports fans, right? So yes, we want them to be educated. We want them to become the journalists, the lawyers, and all of that. But they have to love the sports. And that connection will not be there if they miss out on events like this. Yeah. Mm. That's why when you're going, it's good that you go with the family, yeah. that the kids can also see something that they would love, yeah. right? Because yes, you may want football, but track and field is where that kid's talents may actually be honed. Mm -hmm. And it may start from seeing the way Azamati initiated the bend, right, in, or in that four by 100 meter relay event, if he's not the one doing the ankle leg and all of that. Yeah. So let's encourage each other to at least enjoy we the We should, we should, we should. And, 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 and thank you for the cue. We go to the athlet athletics. Um, that is to say the 100 meters. We have highlights of that. The, the day started wonderfully with um, some boxing news, you know, that 10 out of the 16 participants that Ghana had entered into the boxing have made it into the medal zone. Um, six of that, those 10, have, four of those 10 have already got their bronze medals and six are going to fight. That's how the day started. Then the athletics, the, the, the sprints started around 9 a.m. We had a men's decathlon. Then around 9.20, we had a women's 100-meter heat. And that's where it all began for Ghana. And then the men's 100 meter heats also started. So Azamati got into the semi final, as did Barnabas Age, as did Ansa, Safo, Safo Ansa. And then for the women, all the three that Ghana entered into the 100 meters also all went into the semi final. So we start with the highlights of those. Producer, take it away. So off they go, running well, it's uh, Gina Vaz, look at her, she's grounded, very focused, but in lane two is Claudine, but Gina Vaz is not breaking the sweat, she takes it easily. And you can see she was out of the block before anybody else was, look at the stride, the persistence and the fluidity. Um, that's the word, fluidity. That was she tried to stay with her, but she just didn't have enough in the time. Barnabas again of Ghana as we line up for the men's uh, semi final one of the men's 100 meters. The home crowd, look at that, is urging the fans to forward for Sydney be concerned. Semi final one of the men's 100 meters. Off they go. It's a strong start from Panabas again, but so is Noah Jurea of Cameroon, the Nigerian, considers running strongly from behind, consider, has considered them, and the victory is here, he punches the air, and uh, Ekanin consider, that was a really confident victory from the Nigerian, he didn't start well, had to come from behind, and on his paper, so that's done again, he could consider. He's uh, wobbling a little bit. It's a strong finish to the race. But of us, I get of Ghana in the big white headband. 
they have 82 as well. So, come for that and get you that he was finishing in second and he used that. And now we're going to, you're going to get the loud cheer for this man. Lincoln, you miss it. Lots of people will be holding their breath. And off they go. The Mark Azamati is getting off his, uh, his mark really well. He's in a slight lead, but it's uh, a semi. The Cameroonian running really well. Azamati drops to the finish line in second as well. And the Ghanaians are cheering because they will have two men in the final of the men's 100 meters tomorrow. That's two chances for a medal for the home crowd. But Right, Sports Zone is powered by Hunter's Real Apple Cider, a crisp and refreshing beverage that's perfect for any occasion. Made from hand picked apples and crafted using traditional techniques, Hunter's Real Apple Cider is bursting with natural apple flavors and a hint of sweetness. Also brought to you by Syntex. What is your preferred color of tank? Syntex has it. What guarantee do you want? Syntex has it. What kind of inner layer do you want? Double, triple, quadruple, and as many inner layers that you want. Syntex has it too. We are also being sponsored by Johnny Walker. Keep walking. So if you want a hit of real apple cider to celebrate the athletics you've been watching and, you know, something to give you a tough exterior when you want to store your water, Syntex it is. And if you want to keep walking to the Africa game as well, it's Johnny Walker. <laughs> but Charlie, look, first of all, I need to give it to the Nigerians. Yeah. The Nigerians did not come to play. Mm. Their sprinters are phenomenal. Yeah. And you know, the interesting thing is a lot of them are this is their first senior international tournament. Yeah. Basically like their team B. And this is their team B. Yeah. No, but it, it just goes to show you the preparations that they've had up until this point. It may be their first senior tournament, but at the under 19 level, under 21. So you would see them and a lot of them have a similar trajectory to what the Ghanaian athletes of today are having. Mm -hmm. So remember about a decade ago when the then Ghana Athletics Association had this whole new scholarship scheme where if you do well at UCC, Legon, Tech. Which you, has produced this which crop. Has pro this yeah. crop. So you're having a lot of these Nigerians also because back home the competition is not the same as in the US collegiate system. So you would have athletes who will move out there but unlike their Ghanaian counterparts here, would have that opportunity to compete at the under-19, <clears throat> under-21 level. And I like it for Africa because what it means is that the best of our athletes are getting world-class trainers, are getting world-class facilities, and are exposed to similar talents at that level instead of having to train and compete on facilities here that, do, that are not even internationally certified, for which reason yeah. they are not even recognized. I mean, what time did Edwin Garay run last year? But unfortunately, we could not make noise about it because it was on a track that was not internationally certified, and so you could, you could not speak there. But this is good. I'm only hoping that in the subsequent years, our pool will widen to the extent that Azamati, Azamati would not be required to come and compete, but you would have a few more of Safo Anses, a few more of Edwin Gadais, who by now would have excelled in other competitions. And for me, that's where the next target has to be, that beyond these African games, you're looking at finding a way to sustain the momentum in terms of interest and investment into athletics. A lot of the things that have set Edwin Gadai back is through no fault of his. Yeah. The talent was there, the drive was there, but where was he going to compete? Yeah. On his home, he did not have the resources to say he's going out there to compete in these indoor games and all of that. The sports ministry did not have a fund. Unless it is an Olympic qualifier or a major games on the continent, you were not going to get the funds. Yeah. So let's take advantage of the track now at Legon and ensure that going forward, if we have to repeat the circuit champion, championships that the association was doing a few years back and find a way of generate, providing consistent flow of revenue for it. That's the only way because a lot of the ideas that we'll talk about will sound nice, but without money, they really are meaningless. And, and, and the government needs to. Yeah, money makes the world go round, Danny. Yeah, um, for me, uh, I just want to talk about the, the prospects when we are done with the uh, semi finals. Um, to be honest, Asamati hasn't looked that sharp. 
he hasn't looked that sharp. Uh, what we saw in the heats, I think his semi was the fastest in the heats. He was the fastest in the semi final of the Cameroonian. So for me, he looks like he's a favorite based on what we've seen at the, at the competition so far in terms of form. But we know that um, Azamati has that ability to rise uh, to the occasion. We know what he can do. We look at the times he did in the heats and then the semi semi finals, far from his best. So you know that there's a lot of room for improvement, and he has to. Um, another sprinter that has really impressed me is uh, Barnabas Age. Mm. I think he's 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 enjoyed the home the home support. He's uh, basically obviously and thrived. No pressure. No pressure yeah. at all. He's enjoying it, and that's what I love. You don't go there and shake under pressure. He 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 knows the people. He looked look like he had his own small corner of, of fans. He turned to them, acknowledge them, them. acknowledge them. I loved it, and then went on and delivered and, and, and reached the final. But it's up to them to. To, to rise to the occasion in the final because look, it's a, it's, a, it's a home competition. We expect them and we know that there's room for improvement based on the previous times that uh, they've done. So that is what is giving me that uh, optimism that come the final, we can at least uh, get a, a finish on the podium, at least yeah, get a medal. Um, so, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I, I wanted to show this. this. So mm. this should give us an idea. Of, oh, that thing that came on the screen, the results. Yeah. Uh, just to give an idea of some of the names. Exactly. Um, uh, before this one, we saw, you know, the, the, the first... Yeah, um, as in the, qualif the qualifiers. The, yeah, the qualifiers. But, I mean, there are some of the names here as well. Um, so tomorrow, Ghana's national champion. Yep. So there's a semi, Emmanuel Alobode, who has been phenomenal, jogging both times. <laughs> Benjamin Azamati, Sunday Israel of Nigeria, also there. It's his debut tournament as well. Um, also making it. So these are three that you should look out for. And then, um, you know, Nigeria's national champion, um, Itsekiri, his name is. Yeah. He also ran faster than Azamati, but he will be in the final field against Benjamin tomorrow. Mm. There will be Barnabas again as well. Yeah. And then, um, tomorrow, we, 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 I looked at the time, I think I'll, I'll check the time and confirm it for you before we begin, so that if you want to go to the stadium, the atmosphere was absolutely... It's an evening session. It's an evening, evening session, yeah. yeah. The atmosphere was absolutely electric and as well. Yeah, yeah. Guys, just, just a quick one on, on um, these games and, and what I've noticed. Um, the consistency. The consistency has brought interest. So when you went to um, the Bottomham Sports Complex during the swimming, Nobody needed to tell you that there was a Abeku Jackson, Jackson race about to happen because the numbers in the crowd will tell you. People were literally, when is Abeku? They know he's, re he's swimming today, but when? What time is it? They are waiting for it. Then they'll go and come. Then they'll go and come. Today at, uh, at Legon, when you got in there, I was just monitoring random conversations. Mm -hmm. Charlie Azamati, they ran. We are come for Azamati. I hope they don't no yeah. finish. That kind of thing. You see, so the point is, there is interest. Mm -hmm. you, you don't... You don't you, you may not see it every day, but the consistency is what will bring the interest. So for guys like Azamati, for Abeku, uh, Jackson, you go to arm wrestling, yeah. you go to weightlifting. Um, boxing. Uh, yeah, boxing. Once those names start recurring, when they go out and they consistently bring home good results, it will raise that interest. And that's what we need to be able to push some of these federations to do. It's, it's not always about uh, taking part. Sometimes you need to have a proper plan in place to be able to grow somebody's potential to make sure that next four years he's still around and he's doing better. Yeah. And that is how you, you'll be able to bring the interest. And, and pro, pro, look, there's football going on, but nobody cares. We're yeah. all yeah, 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 yeah. athletics. It should show you. It should, show, it should, it should, it should tell you something. So um, I'm happy for, for some of the individuals in there. And then hopefully, like what Abeku Jackson did, the likes of Azamati and Co can also um, walk the talk by giving us a, a medal. Right, we're spending time on Sport Zone here on the Africa Games. Let's get a couple of comments. Tweet at us, hashtag Sport Zone. Oni Ifeanyi from Nigeria says, I think Emmanuel Eseme from Cameroon might actually win the gold medal because the guy is fast and also he was at the final at the World Indoor Championships this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he has a character. He, you know, there, there's something about the, the, the swag. Like, it's not too known. It's, and that's, you see, what, that's what scares me about him. He's a natural 60-meter runner. Yeah. So he's already very quick. My producer him. says he has aura. <laughs> <laughs> he's a 60-meter runner. He's already oh, very he's quick. Oh, he's a 60-meter runner. Yeah. Um, at the World Indoor, he lost to um, 
Laos, Laos and then uh, no, Christian Coma. So he 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 oh, understands that first. Oh no, the people he's facing here, there is nothing. Bro. Exactly, <laughs> he has the finish also. So for likes of Azamatu is a bit slow off the blocks. You need something extra in the last 40 meters to be able to uh, beat him, and that's where you don't want to be too far off of him coming to the last 40 meters. And that was that's what we saw in the semi-final today. By the last 40 meters, he had given Azamati a very good gap, and then. Uh, eventually even east to the line and still finish with the fastest time in the semi. So he is obviously somebody that, somebody that we should watch, but you don't you don't want to count uh, or bet against Azamati, the home fans. Charlie Ligon is his place. Yeah, Ligon is his place. place. And, <laughs> and it's such a wonderful story, yeah? yeah. Uh, because I, I recall when Azamati became a thing, um, we went to the school, his name was popping up, and it's interesting that Victor mentions Edwin Gadai because... Yeah. Um, at the time, <laughs> Charlie, life. Yeah, yeah. life is on way. No, no, life is on way. We didn't think so. At the time, Azamati was not Gadai's classmate, you know, in the, in the, in no. the athletics. No. no. And Gadai was here and Azamati was yeah. here. When Azamati woke up, he wanted to be Gadai, yeah. you know, but um, the school he was in counted, yeah. you know, it has to be said. The University of Ghana scholarship program at the time was rigorous, it was quick, it was sharp, it was working. The UCC program where Gadai was was not yeah. that as you know, efficient. Was not as efficient in in getting him the scholarship he needed and time passed. Um, Prescott Jr. says as a matter should stop jogging. We all saw him when he was coming. Oh, he should he should dig that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and, <I'm laughs> and Fentua was saying that there was a lot of that at the stadium today. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of angry, yeah. you know, students yeah. and oh, Ghanaians see, watching. They have come to see him put on a show. For they those, have come to use him to brag. Yes. <laughs> for those who came, it didn't matter that this was the heat. It didn't matter that this. For them, it is still the same yeah, UCC level. If a win, yeah. if a win. <laughs> You see, so I, I can understand a lot of those sentiments. And hopefully it spurs him on to um, make all of us proud in the yeah. final. Yeah, so Azamati did his time in 10.41 seconds and the Nigerian champion, 10.29 seconds as well. Banab Asage also uh, ran uh, his time. I'll, I'll get that time correct for you just so that I don't get it wrong. But that's been the athletics. What's been your, your thoughts on it as well? Nene Mlote says... Sprinting is so much like swimming. Having those things on your head and arm reduce your pace. But your technique is what counts, and our Ghanaians have that technique. But it seems that Ni the Nigerians are more powerful yeah. on the average, and they have technique to boot. I think it's a... Yeah, yeah. that's correct. I mean, you can practically see them cutting and slicing through the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you look at Eseme, who, yeah. who won um, the Azamati race, yeah. Similar technique. It was like he was dragging the, the wing. Like, uh, out of his way. Out of like his <laughs> way. While others like Azamati and others are like fighting. Yeah. You know, he's like telling the wing, give way, give way. Get out yeah, of my way. Give way, give way. Powerful. Yeah, powerful. Yeah, so, he has aura. I like yeah. That. No, but you know, these things are thought. I mean, from my days as an athlete, the coaches... Uh, uh, yeah, I was. I was a field athlete. <laughs> so, or had, I'm a, a failed had, athlete. Failed. I am a field athlete. Right. Because, so the coaches will tell you, you know... Each athlete has their gait or their locomotion. Yeah. And your unique sets will determine which technique you go with. Now look at, look at the way Azamati is running. Give, give me a full shot. Uh -huh. Look at the way Azamati is running. Now, okay, if we saw the, 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 the view from... Yes. When the race starts, yeah. we explain what Victor wants to yeah. say. Look at the way Azamati runs. He, he sort of runs with his legs... This way and that way. Yeah. And look at the way Esme runs. I don't, I'm hoping that we'll get Esme handle. has a similar gauge to Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt, yes. exactly. Right, so they, they can... The easiest way to explain this is that they can maneuver and manipulate the atmosphere or the air around, around them, them. And then it doesn't become an abstraction. There are those who have no knowledge of any of these dynamics and that, look, even the way they get out of the starting blocks. Yeah. It's thought. Yeah. Yes, it's thought. Just so for the first five meters, you don't stay down for too long. You don't stay low for too long. And then... Gradual build-up. Usain Bolt famously had a poor start. That's... But when he got into his stride, you were dead. I think this was... Uh, 
he fixed this in 2008. Yes. So after winning his first... Seven going to eight, it, yes. No, after winning the first Olympic gold, yeah, yeah. the very first race when he fixed that was when he shattered the world record okay. until date, yeah. the 9.58 in Berlin in 2009. Yeah. And since then, he's never looked back on, on that. Wait, so, uh, no, 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 you finish. Yeah, so the injuries may have gotten in the way, but you could tell the difference from Bolt's pre-2007 yeah. and Bolt's post-2007, the Olympic gold in 2008, and then Berlin that moment in 2009 and everything else that followed. So Ghana, let, just to wrap up on the, on the Ghanaian interest, for the ladies, Ghana had three who went into the semi-final. All the three, like I said, entered, went there. Benedicta Kwatma, she showed from the beginning that she was not too good, yeah. it must be said. And Ho Haluti, who, whose remarkable story a couple of years ago captured the attention of the nation, a girl from the Upper West region, yeah. Upper West region, she comes from Fentuo's end of the uh, neck of the woods. In fact, they come from the same village. Yeah, very close. Very close. I think um, she was in her ju his junior in school. In school, school. or yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. She went to run in the school's championships, and then she was spotted by somebody from the Shanti region, and she was taken to T.I. Amas. Again, she's a product of the Seki championships. Yeah. So, yes. Um, there's a group, there's, and now listen, listen to this. There's a group, an NGO, who use their own money mm -hmm. just because fitness. Yeah. yeah. That's the name. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I've forgotten Sarah, her name. Sarah. Sarah Asafwe J. They love athletics. Guys, this story is, and you see, and, and sometimes when the government says it, we all say, oh, government is your job, but sometimes a group like that are responsible for, they're responsible for a couple of those people yeah. mm -hmm. paying for some of them to come from the north and elsewhere yeah. so that they could come to the south and at least be fed. Yeah. You know, just small, small things that change their lives. Or how to run in the, uh, the games in the, in the Super Zoo and stuff like that. Yeah. She was spotted. The rest is history. Somebody, you know, um, honed her craft and, and, and all that. We want to hear what you, want to, what you have to say about these games, about Azabati, about, you know, the ladies as well. I was talking about Benita Kwatima, um, who couldn't get into the final, but Mary Boache did as one of them. Yeah. It was really impressive. Yeah, was really impressive. Race was the fastest. Yeah. I think Henry's was the fastest. Yeah. Well. They call her the Jet as well. Now, if you know the history of the Jet, and that's why I, I love shows like this because <laughs> we have ample time. The name Baby Jet, Asamwajan, is he's not the first person to be called the Baby Jet. The mythical Alice Anum, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the original Baby Jet. Yes. Alice Anum of the 50s and of the 60s, sorry, and 70s, who was the legendary. Now, she touched down yesterday um, on the invitation of the LOC to be an ambassador for the games. And these days, she's in a chair. Yeah. But, you know, she's old. She lives in the States right now. And um, she's in town. She was the original baby jet. Yeah. And then, Asamwajan took the name. Mary Boache is called Mary the Jet Boache. But the irony of the, the, the situation was that when she ran her race today, the Nigerian who was beside her showed her that you are Jets, but I'm Jetta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Mary and... and um, so it's only Benedita who couldn't make it to the final. Yeah. Yeah. But tomorrow, the women's 100 meters has two Ghanaians in there, right? Oh, yeah. And then the men's 100 meters has two Ghanaians. Nigeria have three in the men's 100 meters, and it's going to be phenomenal as well. All right, so that's for the athletics. It's been great. Keep supporting it. If you can go to Legon tomorrow, please do. Um, there's been the other games. Today was also the hockey. Now, it's important because Ghana caught Nigeria and beat them back to back. Back to back. back, to back. <laughs> you know, we showed them some things. It was quick and painless. You see what? Quick, quick, quick and, and painless. painless. Yeah, it was bloodless. Yes. Yeah, quick. You know, there are types of coup d'etat. Yeah. In the history, they'll tell you that some of the coups are bloodless coups. They, they collect your dignity without any blood. Yeah. So the women's team followed from the men's team. Um, yesterday, the men's team beat Nigeria by a goal to nail in the hockey. Yeah. And then the Charles Abiu said that they wanted to show them who was boss. <laughs> and then today, the women's team also caught them and beat them and also showed them who was boss. And then the captain also said he wanted to make Ghanaians proud. But in between all that, there was uh, some news that you know, was, was not too good. We, 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 we got a statement, and this didn't come from us, the journalists. The South African Olympic Committee issued a statement that
They have withdrawn both their men and women from the Africa Games. This is from Patience Shikwambawa, the team leader of SA, Team SA. Over and above making this decision, our SA Hockey Federation consulted with Sports Flooring Warehouse, a South African-based specialist in carpet laying, and an FIH is the world governing body for hockey, recognized service provider. They have also advised us, having analyzed the images we shared with them. Now, these images are from the Accra hockey page that you do, so co hockey page, that the field is not satisfactory and may cause harm to the athletes. So, South Africa saying this is why they withdrew. Now, they're also saying that the rescheduling of the hockey competition on three numerous occasions has, in addition, caused an inconvenience to us logistically as a team, where we had to arrange for both the teams to fly to Ghana in time for the commencement of the competition. And as I said, that is Patience Shikwambana, Team SA leader. Um, and so in response, there was a quick rebuttal from Jamaluddin Abdullah, who is the executive assistant to the sports minister, Mustafa Usif. He took to Facebook and said, at the Theodosia Oko Hockey Stadium in Accra, hockey is currently underway amidst the excitement of the games. The stadium's pitch adheres to all international and Olympic standards, ensuring a top-tier competition environment. Disregard any misinformation attempting to discredit the pitch's quality. So, and he also says, the Africa Games have stringent requirements for every event overseen by dedicated officials and officers. Before any competition begins, these individuals meticulously verify that all prerequisites are met. Additionally, representatives from each discipline's continental executives thoroughly inspect the, inspect the facilities, granting approval for the games to proceed. So these are two sides of the coin. Guys, South Africa say they spoke to independent assessors, yes. but they mentioned before then that the games and we know that this is true, the hockey was postponed three times. Yeah. And the reason was that the carpet was not in town. And when the carpet came, they asked them to wait a bit more for it to be laid. And what they didn't say in the statements, but what we know is that South Africa said they have spent too much money here. Yeah. Because they brought their men's and women's That's teams, nice. and they brought a whole lot of equipment, and yeah. they felt like they, it was too much money they were spending as well. I think it's unfortunate. Um, this could have been avoided. And for me, it's not even about the fact that they're leaving. The, the mere decision to keep postponing this for me was, was a massive red flag. And it is something the sports ministry has to look into and try to understand why this happened. Um, off the top of my head and from the information that I have gathered, there were issues with procurement, oh. which would circle back to the sports ministry itself. Because... We've known, and I hate the fact that we always have to repeat this, but we've known for over a year now that we're going to host the games. Why did we not install this carpet if indeed it was in town? I don't think anyone will willingly decide to hire the carpet somewhere when they know the games have started, the opening ceremony and all of that. When we know the schedule and we've given the schedules to these teams, and these teams plan. Now, what our listeners may not know is this. Not every team is going to stay in the country from the opening ceremony to the end of the competition. So, for example, a day after the table tennis competition ended, you had the Nigerians, you had the Tunisians and the Egyptians flying out to Turkey for an international competition. In fact, before then, a lot of them were in Qatar, where, wow. yes, where they were competing in the major international competition. So from, I think, on the 8th to the 12th, 8th of January to the 12th of February, you had about 13 international table tennis competitions in Qatar alone, and I think two in Montreal in the States. African sports is growing. So you have these, all of, and the caliber of talents that we're dealing with these days means that you will not have them for the full duration of your competition. They come, they do their business, they leave. So when South Africa tells you that this is creating an inconvenience for them, this is what they mean. Yeah. Not every member of their national team... You see, the way we run sports in this country gives us, a, misinforms us 
in terms of what pertains elsewhere. And I'll give you an example. The, the bulk of our volleyball and beach volleyball national team players are part-timers. So you have all of these services guys. So the Koprolai, who we interviewed and featured her prominently, Seidu Ajanako, who brought us all of that trouble, yeah. is even a semi-retired, but they play in our national team. You have a few ones like Isaac Barnes, who did well and these days he plays in Belgium, has a professional contract. The former national number one, Rashaka Katadat, also plays in Malta. Who's but injured? We're told she's not. But because we, for whatever reason, were not able to bring her down. Okay. She and then Isaac Barnes, because they are both not injured. Okay. But I'm just saying that just like those two players that we have, a lot of the other athletes coming from other countries are full professionals who play, who have schedules that they have to abide by. Yeah. And they, so the, the football equivalent is... Is what happens... You call, you call players for the international, international break. They do their Fixed business. schedule. They Fixed go. schedule. Then you say, I'm postponing the match. Yes. Then you postpone it once. It, you might postpone it and it might fit inside In, the international yeah. window. Yes. So no problem. But if, 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 sense, if he sure. plays for Real Madrid and Real Madrid have a game on the 31st of March... And you say your Africa games, he will leave. Yeah. He will leave. And that's what has happened with the South Africans. Exactly. And and some of them have club contracts. That they have to go and play. Yeah. What people also need to understand is this. It is the same clash of scheduling that is preventing the likes of Letile Tevogo, Ferdinand, Federico Manala, yeah. and some of these from coming here. Because Ferdinand. Yeah, Ferdinand, while some of them may not be having competitions exactly around this time, there may be a competition that starts a week after where they've got a chance of earning some $15,000 or some $25,000. They are not going to pass that up. Yeah. So I can understand why South Africa would say this is creating an inconvenience for them. So we need to look into this and understand why we could not get that carpet on time. The other issue that I do not, I ho hope and I wished, I was hoping we're not going to get a response from the sports ministry, particularly from that angle, which is the international certification. Because it is, it is not guesswork. There is a clear distinction between getting the facility approved mm -hmm. by Anoka Oksa for the purposes of the African Games. There is a difference between that and the standards of the Federation of International Hockey. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, that is why... So fo in football terms, the Ghana Premier League can say that the Bicham Park... Is fit enough for the Ghana Premier yes. League. Yes, doesn't mean it's fit But when CAF for... wants to organize a, an Afcon qualifier, it won't pass. It, it, yeah. And here's the thing: the same club licensing manager at the GFA who would approve that Bechim Park yes. will not approve. Will not approve yeah. that game for the CAF qualifier or yeah. for that CAF Champions League match. Yeah. So the fact that, for example, Anoka and Oxa would say that it is good enough for the African games does not necessarily mean that it meets international standards. That's why I was hoping that we were not going to respond to that. But Jamal has already done that. Going forward, what I would like to see beyond the inquest and all of that is to ensure that because there is value for money assessment in some of these things. And because, look, and not just for the issue of money, we mentioned Ho Haluti, Edwin Gadai. They have stagnated for so many years. We don't like to say it, but they have stagnated because of the lack of quality facilities that they can compete and test themselves against the best. Those competitions do not exist. The facility does not exist. If we say we want our hockey to return to the days, the glory days of old, then the facilities here have to be such that you can ride to Morocco, you can ride to South Africa. By the way, South Africa are going to the Olympics. No be so. You can write to them and say, want to host you here for this competition or friendly, and then they will come. So look, look beyond this petty squabble yeah. and look at the issues of why this delayed. The responsibility to your athletes first, yeah. because like it or not, our athletes may be quiet. They may not complain, but if there is a risk of getting injured, they are the ones who will suffer for it. Yeah. So look at that. Look at what contribution this will make to the development of hockey itself if you're able to look, get that facility to the standard that it meets specifications. Let's not be emotional about this and, and try to be petty about it. Well, that is so disappointing. It's, it's, and you see, I, I don't even like the calm, calm nature of it. <laughs> actually, is coming from. It's, Charlie, it's my not, energy is gone. No, see, it's, not, it's not one of those <laughs> things. It's Charlie not one of those things. Look, this is the image of the country you are, yeah. you are destroying. 
this is a serious embarrassment. And let's not act surprised. And that's, what, that's why the, the response is completely pissing me off. Just keep quiet. You don't need to Just talk. let it pass. Because we know, we know that you guys are culpable. You are the reason why this thing has happened. Don't, don't come and try and bluff. And it, it's, it's really annoying. Because when was the, 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 the field finally laid, the completion? Oh, a day was just a couple of days ago. Oh, a day before the first match. It was not tested. You had told a participating nation, nations that as at August 2020, uh, October, October 2023, it will go through a series of testing. And then one day before the start of the competition is when you finish laying it. That means the first match of the competition was the first time that this thing was being used. You can't do that. And these are international standard athletes. If you don't respect your, your, your home athletes, that's cool. But you can't bring somebody from somewhere to come and risk their careers and finish and come and tell them that. Do you know what is more standard than them? <laughs> no, seriously. Do South, South Africa are number one. In Africa. In Africa, in both the men and women, mm -hmm. they've consistently been, been at Olympic Games. They've consistently been at yes. World Hockey and Championships. They're, they're, are you the one going to tell South Africa what is standing and what you know, is You know what is even funny? When I saw the response, I mean, you know, they are, some of the, 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 the administrators are friends. And so I didn't want to. I just did the right thing, you know, journalism. You put out a story, there's a rejoinder. We put Publish. it out. Because yeah. that's a professional thing. I didn't want to engage. But here's the thing. And to all those who are saying... But Egypt are playing, but Nigeria are playing. Oh. It's been explained here. You know why Nigeria are playing? They don't have the money to play against this sort of opposition outside oh, of this country. tournament. And so if they are here, it's free. They will, play them. It's free. South Africa, do. Now guess what? The thing, they, they, when I got a story and I was checking, what even blew my mind was, Charlie, look, there are countries and there are countries. South Africa's insurance provider, the team is insured. Yeah. The insurance provider called them and said, we have heard that some of your players, in fact, as part of the insurance package we signed for your team, it is in line with the FIH standards. So if you go and play, and they wanted to play because yeah. it's a free warm-up yeah. for them. Yeah. Like you said, the table tennis people have got from Qatar, yeah. they've come here, they are Take warming you. up for the Olympics. And so the South African players, they wanted to play. It didn't beat them because they, they know they would have won. Mm -hmm. The insurance provider told them that if you play and you head, we are forfeiting your insurance, your life cover. Yeah. But you know, know the risk <laughs> no. so now that so, you... In fact, that's the real reason why they left. No, you see, it, the insurance provider said, any injury you incur... It's at your cost. It's at your cost. Yeah. And we will put it in your file that anywhere you get injured, we will say that we told you not to not play to. on and this. You went. And it has aggravated. Yeah, look, some people, people need to take responsibility. <laughs> Seriously, people need to be punished for some of these things. Yeah. Because, look, it happened in badminton. It happened in table tennis. It happened in, uh, it's happening in hockey. Why is everything last minute? You spend so much money and you can't organize the simple games. You were given the rights when in 2019, you've had five years to plan for this thing. 2018. You've... You've yeah, bragged yeah. about the most unnecessary things. We don't, you see, some of these things, if you talk, then they'll say you're being negative. But if you are building, when the NFL uh, Super Bowl winner yeah. came on the tour to, uh, to Bottiman with the sports minister, turning around, Ghana can host a World Swimming Championship in a thousand seater capacity uh, 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 aquatic center. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> and the guy will look and he'll nod his head. But in his head, he, he knows you are joking. Are you serious? A thousand seater. When Frigate, the first six families come and they sit down and nobody has a place to sit. Thousand seater capacity and you want to host international standard competitions. Are you serious? And you are telling a, a, an NFL Super Bowl winner that oh, Ghana can host. It's not about talking. Oh. You have to show working. People need to take responsibility for some of these things. Because then we'll dance around the thing and then it's over. If you don't respect yourself, you can't bring top standard people and can't kind of disgrace all of us. Guy, today... When the news came out, yeah. people were talking about it at Botima. Yeah. Somebody tells and asks me if I'm going. I denied. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I denied. No, because it was embarrassing. Yeah, and they were tying it on. Look, the issues that happened over the weekend at Botima, they were tying it into, so Ghana this, so Ghana. And I'm sitting there, and the way you finish, you say, you think we are happy when we are giving negative? And, and you, know, you know the part of it that, and I can understand Danny's annoyance because... A lot of us cover for the country. Yeah. So when I was at table tennis, the very first, in fact, the day before the competition started, there were some 
mishaps that I, I spotted there. So I would call CDM. I would call Yao. I spoke to Yao. So, so Yao understands a lot of the things that I'm talking about because this lied within their merits. What, when they say journalists are negative, what they don't admit to is behind the scenes, the phone calls that we place to them to point them in the things that they need to correct. But some of the things you simply cannot deny. For example, yesterday and on Saturday, I was at Bukum for the boxing event. On Saturday, he delayed for over an hour. We reported that. Now, at a point, I'm speaking to the international broadcasters who were there. You know, the, someone has, is subletting this to the GBC too. So they are asking for answers because they are in direct touch with the organizers. At a point, they get frustrated and then they start lashing out to anyone, complaining to anyone there who's minded to who's listen. Who's listening. Yeah. So I walk out of the room. Just when I walk out of the room, another colleague sees me. He sees my tag and says, oh, you're a journalist. Any word on why the delay and why we're starting? When we're starting, I say I have no idea. Eventually, I go and ask Jojo, Jojo Epson, and then he gives us the information that we're told we're starting at four. You have had God knows how long to erect the boxing ring and the shade for the judges and all of these things. You could not do that in the morning. It is in the afternoon. Beach volleyball, every day there was a delay. Why? Because at the end of each day, they have to dismantle the courts. And then the following day, they have they to erect the next, the nets and everything together. Why? Anyway. Um... And when these things happen, Yes, I think. It is not the, the multimedia journalist who reported it. That is the devil. His fellow Ghanaians who were there. Look, Gary, on three of the four days that I was there, officials, the sun got so hot that officials had to ask the organizers to bring watering cans. So right before our eyes, they would start watering the beach with water. Occasionally, they would do that. And then I got to a point, they, had, they that act, the, the same people who asked that, we try to reduce the temperature would ask them to stop because the sun was getting compact. And those were not the natural. Sure. Anyway, so um, we are just, you know, th there's a lot more bad news we don't report. And this is being very honest with you because if I ask them to, the number of phone calls, like we said, the number of calls we make to say, oh, boss, we have heard that this is happening, this is happening. Like this South African one, it was a statement they issued, not one that we issued. Dang. So eventually it would have come out. But this, this kind of, so because they have a duty to their taxpayer, yeah. they issued a statement to say that you have sent us to Ghana to go and play. But we went and we didn't bring anything home because the Ghanaians did this. Yeah. So they issued that statement and we saw it. Yeah. So what were we supposed to do? And I, I genuinely want the people who say we are being naked, what are we supposed to do? To cover up for things. And the final thing I'll say before we move on to, to, to football is, I've always said this, and the more I have tried, even in football, we say we are, football is the, is the passion of the nation. I want to tell you watching, Ghana, we are not a football nation. Mm -hmm. Football, we are Believe me, we, we don't know the football. Because when you travel, this man went to Morocco. He has still not recovered. It's been one year. I'm telling you. Look, when people do football, and you see the way the clubs brought their sport, like people are doing sports. We don't, we don't do sports here. We, we like the sports, but we don't actually do the football. No, Gary, see. Just not to interrupt you, but this, this, the, table, the men's table tennis is final. When Omar Asa collapsed, we saw the medical team behind him. Yeah. And you come from where? Tunisia. Tunisia. He, he's one man. He is one man. The sort of investment that has gone into producing an athlete like that. And the, still, the investment to sustain where he is. And you look at the size of the entourage that they are paying for one person to go. When I spoke to their media coordinators, the simple thing they told us is that we don't have any magic anywhere. We're just intentional, and we look at where we can get consistent flow of revenue. Yeah. Just to conclude on this, this government has introduced a billion taxes. 
what stops it from introducing one levy for sports for sport, yeah. to fund sports in this country? So we, that it's not even your money. It is there. It's there. Like, because we know that. Especially the, Each yeah. year, 90% of the sports budget goes into paying salaries and compensations mm -hmm. at the sports ministry and NSA. When the Black Stars play one qualifier... The it, money is finished. So if we want to do sports, if we're intentional about it, create a sports fund. But the low-hanging fruits are the little disgraces are the African games that we should be able to avoid. Yeah. That one, it doesn't take money to fix. Right. Sports Zone is brought to you by Syntex. Um, Syntex Tan, a strong, a tough, and also Hunter's Apple Cider. It's got real apples. And another, it's another quality product from Casa Preco. A bulk purchase, contact 0262-351-251. It's a crisp a refreshing beverage that's perfect for any occasion. And also brought to you by Johnny Walker. Keep walking. We go for this break. When we come back, we do some club football. It's been a good weekend for Manchester United. How will it last? Thank you for staying with us here on Sports Zone. It's every Monday, 9 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Gary Al Smith here sitting in for Fentu Tahiru. We've had an extensive discussion on the Africa games. There isn't much we, we haven't touched on from Ghana to the um, headline makers across the various disciplines um, to the Blue Ribbon event. Tomorrow is the 100 meters and uh, men's and women's finals as well. And we are going to do football. Just in, we are hearing that the black princesses who were looking to book a spot in the final on Thursday. Yeah. The final is on Thursday of the women's football and they had to go past Senegal. And the initial news we are seeing is that they have won that game. The game started at 8, so by now it should be done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we are hearing that it's 3-1. Uh, we'll confirm what the final result is. But if that is true, it means that it's Ghana, Nigeria again. It's a repeat, mm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. A repeat of the Wafu uh, final. Really interesting stuff. Uh, what was it in June last year mm. where they beat Nigeria on penalties to win the Wafu? Uh, in when, Kumase. In Kumase went on to successfully complete their World Cup qualification uh, series where they qualify for yet another FIFA Under-20 World Cup. That's you see Basigi. You see Basigi. And then they are back here again, uh, reaching the final of the All-Africa Games. Now, is there, if there's a team that can't do wrong in our eyes, it's a black princess. Mm. It looks like every competition they touch, they find a way to bring success. And uh, despite the fact that they are, they are not helped at all by those supposed to be looking after them. And that is what is breaking my heart. You see, when we come out and we make certain promises, you, 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 every, every parent likes to reward a child that is doing good. So when the child consistently does good and you, you promise them certain things, things that are due them, and you say that this time around, I'll get it for you, we expect that you get it for them. And if it happens that uh, uh, the time has elapsed where you promise, so if, if I said I'll get something for you on Monday, and Monday has passed and I've not given you uh, what I promised, the most decent and humane thing to do to come to you and tell you why I've not gotten it for you and probably give you a reassurance. But unfortunately, um, those in charge of the, bl the black princesses at the GFA, the, the women's football desk, they don't care about the black princesses. They don't care at all. What they care about, and I can promise you, is that Thursday when Ghana beats Nigeria and we win that gold medal, They'll be the first to go and take pictures with their black princesses and brag that they've won good. But when it comes to something as simple as per diems, paying these girls per diems, they've not been paid. They are sitting there in Cape Coast, have gone through the group phases, have just beaten Senegal in the semi-final, have reached yet another major final, are probably going to win it again. And you can't give them something as simple as per diems. If you go back to the World Cup qualification bonuses that they are due, they've still not been given that. And we all know, you and I know, Atu knows, that once this competition is over, forget. They will not give it to them until probably when the World Cup starts and these girls now have to go back and beg for what is due them. Per diem, what they will survive on every day in Cape Coast has not been given to them. And what annoys me the most is the fact that just a couple of weeks ago, we were told on camera by the person who's supposed to be their mother, head of the women's desk at the GFE, that they will get what is due them before it's actually an executive council member. Executive council member, part of the most powerful 12 in Ghana football. 
that they will give them what is due them before the start of the Africa Games. We are sitting here. They are heading to the final, and they've still not been given what is due them. Not even a visit to Cape Coast to at least tell the girls why the money is having come. Not even a visit. But I'm telling you again, let Thursday come and let Ghana beat Nigeria in the final. It will be the first to go and stand with the girls and take pictures. Why do we do these things? Why are we so... Why? This is wickedness. It's not nice. Why do you do that? When it's time to pay yourself, you are very quick to do so. We saw it at the World Cup. Very quick to pay their own bonuses. But when it comes to doing the right thing to make sure that the people who are making you successful, the people who are giving you a reason to sit in the position that you sit in, you don't want to give them what is due them. And now you have to go around all sorts of angles, trying to, they ask people, beg them, oh, do something for us to make sure we get, why do we do these things? Some of these girls have only football. They, you, you, you see, you can't compare the female football, women's football to men's football. Men's football is fully professional in this country. They are clubs, hire them, they pay them at the end of the month. Some of these girls, if your, your only reason or your only, the only good thing you can get from football is being talented enough to reach a national team level. Yeah. And when you, get that, when you get to that national team level, it's some of these bonuses that will sustain you. It's not like these bonuses will make them automatically rich. It's going to settle debts. People have made sacrifices for them and people are waiting for their money because they see them in a position where they are supposed to be reaping their benefits. So these are some of the small, small, small things that these girls need. But still, you don't give it to them. You rather come and lie. You lie that the money will come before the start of the competition. And when it doesn't come, you can't go back to them and just, you just go and reassure them again. You can't do that. Why do we do this? You play the, I want, Bernard, please play the video. So it's not like I'm the one who is saying it. It's a lie. Get what you said, it's a lie. That's what, that's what you deserve. Which I feel for a while as a country, we had not been doing so well. But then when you check, for some time now, they've been getting really their due. The difference is that, yes, we are owing black queens, we are owing satellites, sorry, we are owing princess, and we had, when we spoken to them, myself, the president of GFA, Mr. Ketukwiku, and then the minister and the ministry had spoken, and they had made promises to us that we are going to get these monies for these girls before we start we go into our next match, which means going against Zambia in on the 23rd of February. So we are, we are very hopeful. We believe what the ministry has said. And then the girls going for, the princesses are going to get their days before they even go for the All African Games, which I think is what we should believe. And then the money will come. The have, have you heard? So why? Like, does it need to take... Daniel Cranting to come on TV to come and remind you when you know you have a job to do for these girls. So, so this one, so viewers, you, I'm begging you. This thing, you know, you, you oh. know, Joyce Force, we'll cut it, we'll put it on social media, we'll cut it. So, if you know Auntie Gift, you tell her that it's, it's, it's Joyce Force again. <laughs> <laughs> but, Gary, Gifty's hands are tied. No, you she see, can only push. She's our friend, but yeah, but uh, I'm but also we, explaining we, we, that we, 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 she we, has, we, we feel more for the girls that we. Feel she for has conflicted loyalties. Are you? This is between the GFA and the sports ministry. Uh -huh. When it benefits them, they do it quick. No. When it's time for the but, Black Stars, they do it quick. But we the Black are, Stars don't even bring but, us any success. But the, what do these girls need to no do bad. again before you give them what, what is due them? No I'm, not, you, I'm not arguing that. What I'm saying is that assuming the person who is supposed to make the case for yes, her. Yes, assuming, let's just assume mm -hmm. she can't do it. She can delegate it to somebody to chase for her. The bottom. Then why is she the GFA is there. Why is she in that position? No, no, I'm saying, so assuming that because of where she comes from mm -hmm. politically, yeah. you know, it's difficult for her. She's, what, the, the portfolio is what, head of national service? Deputy director. Deputy director. And so she can't scream too much because you understand. Look, in another jurisdiction, yeah. it is that extra power that will even give her extra power ah, to, to be able to fast track it. Fast track the man. So I'm saying, if, assuming what you're saying is true, then there are other people at the GFA. You understand? <laughs> you know, there, there are new appointments at the GFA that we are coming like by the way. these things too we much. You understand? So today, Officially, the communication directorate has been changed. Mm -hmm. So Neil Armstrong Motagbe is leading a new PR division. We are not too clear whether it's separate from the communications division, but there's a new PR division created because apparently the GFA says they are not able to control or, or, or deal with 
the flow of information. Control narratives. Yeah, control <laughs> narratives, basically. That's what everybody, yeah. every communication yeah. division wants to do. And so they've brought in Neil Armstrong, who has also brought in Patrick Akoto from Media Ma, Sheikh Tofik as well. So this is official, this is on the GFE website. What is less official is that we understand that Prosper Harris Tenado will no longer be the general secretary of the GFE. And that's Amabrobe, who was the head of, who put together the women's what, strategy, mm -hmm. um, is going to be one of the new general secretaries. So what we are saying is that there are more women there, at least in power. She was head of the women's strategy. Now that she has more power, we, we don't expect to be seeing these... Gary, Gary. Yeah. Amabrobe doesn't have the clout to make these things happen. Let, let's not give people on. She can't. She can't help in commerce. Those ones, we know them. They like the photo ops. They, there is a black star. There is an event. We come and take the pictures. But when you need someone to speak, when you need someone to make a move behind the scenes, to move the needle, it, because this is where the relevance will show. My, it is not the so, nice speeches. Yeah, so. Anyway, so we are, we are done with that. We, Danny wanted a few minutes to rant. We've given you the score for the black princesses who are into the final. Please pay them. We beg. Please pay them. Let's go to the Ghana Premier League. My producer is saying that we, we have KPIs. Um, <laughs> so Ghana Premier League this weekend. Yeah. Scores. On your screens, this is how the cookie has crumbled. It's been tough following the Ghana Premier League this weekend for yeah. me because, Charlie, my attention has been on... Like, I don't even know what's happening in the, in the, in the Premier League proper. Yeah. <laughs> Let alone, Let alone Ghana, Ghana Premier League. League. But I think yeah. this weekend we had some really... Some really good matches I was able to follow because... There is yeah. something I don't like about our friend, Dr. Ogum. Ogum. The Kotoko coach. For some time now, he's been shirking his media responsibilities. Yes, and he's been giving it to the assistant. Yes. yes. And yesterday, when he was sent off, he refused to leave the pitch. Charlie. So wait. For anyway, let's time. let's go to the results. Nations FC 3-0 Brickham Chelsea. Dreams 2-2 Summer Text. BBNE Gold Stars 2-1 before Quartano. Bechem United 1-0 Legon Cities. Karela 3-2 RTU. Um in Swatchman 1-0 Mediama. Adriana Stars 2-1 Kotoko. Probably the result of the round. Heart of Oak 2-1 Heart of Lions. One. That got Victoria. Two Tama Close in yeah. Heart 11 is a mighty team. Yeah. The table. Summer Techs are going to ring the the Premier League. They Win play Hearts of Oak next. Winning, winning it. Winning it. <laughs> winning it. Summer Tech's 39. Adriana Stars 36. Nations FC 34. In Swatchman 33. Same. Breakroom Chelsea. Uh, Bechem United 32. Hearts of Oak 32. The table is tied. The top, the top what? Seven is crazy. Yeah. The top eight, actually. Yeah. So if they Summer Tech lose two games, finished. And mm -hmm. Sunday they play hard to work. My goodness. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the bottom half. Great Olympics, Legon City's Dreams. Dreams FC, Africa Dreams FC. Well, if they win two, that will give them plus six. That will take them to... 33. 33, yeah. That puts them in the top. Charlie, the table is away. Eh? <laughs> Accra Lions, 27. Karela, 27. Bafakwa, 23. Out of Lions, 21. Real Tamale United, 19. Yeah. So that's it. In the Ghana Premier League. What's next? We go to Europe. Right? Mm -hmm. This weekend, FA Cup action. Jurgen Klopp will do one. You won't get any of the Rupo. <laughs> the quadruple will Rupo and then the pull and the little. Will all disappear. All disappear. <laughs> you think and then he will end the season with Qua. With Qua. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge. So, man went into. Now, some people say that Liverpool's loss to Manchester United started last week, Thursday. Because they overexerted themselves in Europe. Do you agree? No, I don't. They were just poor in their finishing. It was just as simple as that. And you see, this is a very right, funny so thing. So as about Danny speaks, we get the highlights so that we This see. is a very funny thing about cup games. You have to take your moments. Yeah. It's not like league action where even if you draw points today, you have another chance. It's 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 one it's a one-off. You fail, you fail, you win, you win. And for Man United, they were able to somehow withstand the storm. Of Liverpool for the entire second half. So I, let's let's see the highlights and then we come back. Mm. Let's see what Danny is talking about. Wasn't it a man who they say he had deleted all the Man United pictures of his face? Of his yeah. yeah. He will upload more. You upload more. <laughs> <He'll> upload more. <laughs> um, superb winning goal. Um, but from a Liverpool point of view, it will be very disappointed. Man United will not care. This is what cup games are about. Um, the winner of the cup is not the best footballing yeah. team. Yeah. It's a team that takes their moments. And United have done that, and they've got themselves a very sweet semi-final draw. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it's. It's looking really good for Man United. But look, Liverpool will be very pained by this result, the sort of football that they played. 
And Klopp, uh, if you watch Klopp's post-match uh, uh, interview, you can tell he was, he was really, he was hurt. really, really hurt. And not surprising, he's actually a very bad loser. But it is what it is. Liverpool are out. United are through by taking their chances again. Yeah. Um, they've, they've sailed through some... They've, in fact, this sort of scenario has panned out in the last couple of months in the Premier League where they don't necessarily play well. But when they get the chances, they are going to kill you. So at least that's a positive that Man United can, can take going forward. Now, we have just a couple of minutes to end the show. Um, what's else been topical apart from this? Now, you want to crack at the Man City... Newcastle? No, the, the semi-final. Man City and Chelsea. Yeah. I think it's a big opportunity for Chelsea to, not just for the manager, for a lot of those players, they will be playing for their stay at Chelsea next term. Because whatever assurances Mauricio Pochettino has been given, I think in his heart of heart he knows that he doesn't have a lot of credit in the bank. The football they've played is not exactly comforting. The results have, are even worse than that. Players are not exactly improving. The team has made significant outlay into players that you can't see where they are going. And even though it is not his fault that these players were not performed before he came into the club, you cannot also tell where he's had his influence as far as their development is concerned. So for both the manager and even for the players, a lot of them, like the 100 million pound toy that these days, they, they don't know what to do with him. For a lot of those players, the owners will be looking at them and be thinking, hang on a minute, do we cut our losses? Because if it's been 24 months, do we cut our losses yeah. and, and, and then move on? I have a question though, I mean on this. Does it affect Liverpool's chances in the Premier League? It does. Huh. I think that Klopp's biggest takeaway from... Briefly, 10 seconds. Yeah, biggest takeaway from that defeat will be, this has happened before. In the seasons when City pipped them to the league title, Liverpool would be in front, but they would drop points in matches in the manner that they've done at Old Trafford today. Danny, Danny says that uh, Arsenal will win the Premier League. Yes, Danny, Arsenal have won the Premier League. <laughs> anyway, Africa Games continues. We have reached a part where it's athletics, and so look, um, we have tickets at Joy FM front desk. We'll get another set tomorrow. So just pass by. And it's free gate. So what we mean by is VIP tickets, right? Just passed by Joy FM tomorrow um, in the morning from around 9 a.m. From 9 a.m. And then you get tickets to watch the um, athletics for tomorrow as well. Thank you for staying with us. Fento should be in this seat again tomorrow. Uh, next week, yeah. he's running commentary yeah. on the Africa Games. I hope you've liked his commentary. Sweet. World class. Yeah. Sweet. He's a Joy Sports product. What do you expect? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Show brought to you by Syntex, a strong, a tough Hunter's Real Apple Cider. It's got real apples and also by Johnny Walker Keep Walking. Thank you to all of you who sent in texts. We see all of them and we'll keep interacting with you on social media. Show is produced by Elon Benaya Defia Mekong. <laughs>